How are y'all doing really today? Good. You? I'm doing good. Yeah, I just want some it. friends like y'all, some work co-workers <laughs> like you have. Because the chemistry on, that you guys man. have, I was like, I need a co-worker to yeah. pour into me. Yes. I, I, I tracked this guy. When we did this movie, when we were about to do this movie with J.J. Perry, Texas uh, director, um, I said, I'm not going to do the movie unless uh, Dave Franco plays sex. I'm not doing the movie. And they're like, I said, this dude I've been watching for a long time. I've been clocking out. I'm a comic snob. So I'll laugh at people, but I'm not intrigued. He intrigued me. I said, how does dude mind work? I said, we get him in the movie. We get a little bit of that lethal weapon sort of magic. Mm -hmm. We good. But like you said, it's just this guy, he just he builds you up in the best way. He just makes you feel comfortable. It makes you feel confident. And like, you know, I felt free to try anything knowing that. Jamie is so quick, he is so talented that whatever I threw at him, we were gonna go back and forth for as long as they let us, and that's when you get the magic. Look, the magic came through, because I was like, I had to call my coworkers, like, I need y'all to be better, okay? Because the relationship they have, that's yeah. what I need to yeah. do my job. Of course, of course. <laughs> but I like that at the heart of this story, you know, it's about the sacrifices that we make for the people mm -hmm. we love, the things that we're willing to do to make sure that they have a better life. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know for the both of you, like, who were some of those people in your life that sacrificed to get you to where you Ooh, are? Come on, man. My grandmother, Terrell, Texas. You know I'm from Texas. My grandmother, down the street from here, 28 miles. My grandmother, my grandfather, Marky Lewis Talley and Estelle Talley sacrificed all. They, you know, my grandmother used to, they used to pick cotton. Mm. So my grandmother, and she was smart though, she figured out, you know, my grandfather could count. So they ended up getting a truck and started like, you know, creating their own like little business of where they would count the, 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 the bales of cotton and things like that. And then she became an educator, had her own uh, nursery school and she sacrificed all. She mm. said, because I know uh, you got it. Taught me a uh, uh, classical piano. I said, Grandma, I gotta, mm. I gotta learn classical so you can go on the other side of the tracks. Amazing. I said, oh, on the other side of the tracks with the white people? No, silly. All over the world, this, mu this type of music take you all over the world. So for her sacrifice, that's why I'm here. I love that. I don't have as good of an answer as that, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I think about my parents and like, you know, um, they, they, uh, my dad passed away, but they were both artists, and my mom still is, and they, they just encouraged me to do this. They, you know, a lot of parents, they, they kind of warn their children from going into the arts because it's difficult, but, like, my parents were always like, do whatever you want to do. You, right. you like doing this, let's go for it. And, like, my whole family, it's a weird artsy family to the point where, like, you know, we're at Thanksgiving, everyone's making like sculptures with their mashed potatoes. It's like, it's that kind of family, yeah. but like we all feed off each other and encourage each other. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Look, you got a little family, okay? But I mean, let's talk about these little scenes with our vampires, because y'all took it to another level with the contortionists. Like, yeah. how was it actually it's filming crazy. those scenes? It was crazy. I was when like, hold on now. Sun girl went away, went, I said, man, but when we were filming, First of all, when we showed the trailer, the sh trailer overperformed. It did 19 million views in 24 hours. The reason being, because when I took the shotgun and I blew that old white lady away, <laughs> and she went all the way to the back of the bathroom, people was calling me like, yo, money, what kind of a movie? And so that lady was a contortionist. Mm -hmm. And so this was the first time we've ever seen anything right. like this practical. Because there was no smokes and mirrors. It's so wild that it yeah. almost doesn't look real. Yeah, like that's yeah. her bending over that's herself. Her bending. And yeah. But we had to be careful because the way her body was, mm -hmm. we weren't allowed to jerk. We had to sort of move fluidly yeah. because she was like, I guess, disengaging her right, body. Right. So she was vulnerable. But uh, with J.J. at the helm, who's the most incredible action director, mm -hmm. uh, he knew exactly what to do, and like people are yelling and screaming at the. At, and you know, I say it's bittersweet. It's not in the theater, which I. It, it's great to watch an audience watching and yelling and clapping for these great uh, uh, stunts and everything like that. But uh, JJ is the one who put it uh, put it all together. Look, I love that. Not what happened to grandma, but I still you know, <laughs> still love that scene. But I just want to thank the both of you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. It means so much. Thank and I'm just sending you. love and light both of your ways. Thank you so much. Love and light right back. Thank yeah. you. I receive it. How are you doing today? Hey. All right, Sean, how are you doing? I am doing good. Look, I really love that at the center of this movie is like this underlying story about the sacrifices that we make for our family, for the people that we love. And I wanted to know for you, like, who are some of those people in your life that made sacrifices to get you to where you are now in your career? My wife, for sure. We've been together for 27 years. Um, 
just uh, always is there. She's an attorney. She's Megan Good's character was inspired by my wife because she's the Mike Tyson of arguers. <laughs> And, uh, but she's absolutely, uh, without her, I would be um, a pool of putty somewhere in some corner. You know, she's um, absolutely been an inspiration to me and, and, and a, a tremendous teammate, partner. Oh, I love that. Okay, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I, I like that this doesn't feel like, you know, the other vampire movies that we've seen. And it does such a good job of balancing all of these different tones that we get. But I wanted to know for you, like, what is one thing, one aspect that you wanted to add to the vampire genre to make this stand out above the rest? So I was inspired, inspired is, is I would say what inspired this movie was Big Trouble in Little China, Lost Boys, Evil Dead, and Fright Night. Because mm. I'm, I'm, I was, I graduated from high school in 86. So those are the movies that really, the action comedy horror, that genre and it's kind of lost. You might have Zombieland-ish, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't really make movies like that anymore. And I was, I've always felt like it was, why don't they? You know, I always was looking for that. Um, the vampires, because we shot the movie in 42 days, which is a very short time with no second unit in the middle of a pandemic, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of time to, to put a ton of the different vampire makeups on them. And I also knew that we didn't have the money to do an extensive visual effects on all of the vampires, just some. So we try to do everything in camera. I really relied on the movement. Mm -hmm. So I took contortionists right. and uh, weaponized contortionists and reactionized it. And then I shot it in reverse when they would smash one of them on the, on the table. You can't really do that to a person because you would have hurt them. But we put them in their number two and then on a wire, pull them out into their number one and in reverse with this magical frame rate that I will sell online to anybody who wants to know. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, so it took a lot of R&D, but that's one of the things that I really wanted to lean on. I, 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 given another opportunity and a little more time, I, would, I, would, I, have, a, I have some other plans. So hopefully we'll, we'll be talking again if we do a sequel. We're going to manifest that right now, okay? Amen. It's I'm done. It. I'm with it. <laughs> but I mean, this is it's weird to think that this is like your feature like debut because you've been in the business for so long and it feels like this is something you do every single day. And I wanted to know like, what was the experience like actually being, you know, the the director down in the second unit, how has the experience changed how you're going to navigate your other projects? Um, you know, when you're directing second unit, it's actually very, it's actually more technical than mm -hmm. directing first unit. Because if you're directing, uh, if you're locking up a city and you've got 10 cars or 20 cars and six motorcycles and helicopters and explosion, it's infinitely harder to do that than it is to direct a couple of people at a table talking. Um, so bringing that second unit mentality, the technical aspect, like when you shoot, and that would mean only if you have good actors. If you have bad actors, it would be very hard, I think. But um, uh, directing second unit was, I was very comfortable doing that, directing second unit in Sun Courting, because you're not, you just go and kick ass and then go and do it all over again somewhere else. You're out doing crazy stuff with your friends, then you get on a plane, go somewhere else and do it all over again. This is a longer commitment. Like I've been working on day shift now for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. This is the end now, you know, but we were in post for almost a year. So um, I, I think for me now that I've seen behind the curtain, I learned what I don't need to do mm. next time. Okay. Not what I need to do, but more like what I wouldn't need to do. I mean, but what is, what is the main message that you want people to walk away with? Because it has so many different things that you can pull from. And what is that main core message you want the audience to leave with? What I want them to do, the, the world is a dark place right now, like with the double feature of COVID and monkeypox yeah. and Ukraine and Russia. I just want them to enjoy the movie and laugh. I'm not trying to make anyone think anything or take anything or do anything. There's a lot of things in there that have a lot of my heart in it, but I want them to take what they want to take from it. And if they don't, I'm not trying to tell them to do anything. Okay, I'm all right with that. <laughs> well, look, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. I really appreciate, I appreciate you. you. And I'm sending nothing but love and light your way. I hope you have a great day.